a strong wind blew across the busy car park, driving invisible particles of dust towards the cobbled streets beyond. It moved crisp packets across the ground and sent discarded fizzy drinks cans spiralling off the curb. It passed between the legs of people shopping in the late morning sunshine, cooling warm skin as it peeked into pockets, stealing tissues and sweet wrappers. It sent dry leaves into open shop doorways as it continued its relentless journey through the town towards the bold colours of the park. The wind blew through the branches of short, thin trees and of tall, thick ones, the branches swaying in a near-silent dance. It tickled the long grass with its constant breath until it reached a clearing. Here, the wind stopped. A flock of starlings flitted between curls of white cloud in near-perfect harmony, creating swarming dark shapes across the sky. They flew above the small children's play area, noticed by a few of the running, laughing children before disappearing beyond the trees. The birds followed the path of the wind, dropping and soaring upwards with the air currents, tiny wings flapping with endless energy. They followed each other, instinct directing them. They flew in unison, high above the waving trees, towards the clearing in the centre of the woody copse, and then, as they reached it, still in unison, they fell towards the ground. Hey, little squirrel, I've got a present for you. Don't go far, Ryan, his mum called out, but Ryan barely heard, too intent on taming the squirrel, who always managed to stay a metre from his crouching body. Come on, little squirrel, I won't hurt you. He moved towards the creature, shuffling close to the ground, his bent white legs almost shining against the dark brown twigs and branches which littered the ground. He remembered a story that his mum had told him about how you could tame a wild bird by throwing salt on its back and wondered fleetingly whether this would work on a squirrel. The thought disappeared from his mind as quickly as it had come when he realised he didn't have any salt anyway. He spoke in a soft voice, trying to calm the creature as he held an acorn out towards it on an outstretched palm. Ryan walked further into the copse of trees, crunching dried sticks underfoot. He watched with dismay as the squirrel scuttled up the thick trunk of a tree before sitting on a protruding branch, just out of reach. He dropped the acorn on the floor and picked up a large twig. Hitting it against the trunk of the tree, he snapped it in two. The squirrel took flight, sprinting on tiny legs, further up the tree. Oops, sorry little squirrel, he said. I didn't mean to. Ryan's attention was drawn away by movement a little further into the wooded area. He turned towards it, but could see nothing past the thick, leafy trees. He stepped forwards before turning back. He could hear his mum speaking loudly to her best friend, Rebecca, over at the picnic which was set out on the thick green grass a few metres away from the entrance to the woods. Satisfied, he walked again, his thin legs breaking out in goosebumps beneath red shorts. Towards the area, he thought he had spied something. He peered around a large tree, the bark rough against his hand, and into a small, flat, grassy area where the trees and plants, so abundant behind him, had not grown. He took another small step forwards, but still kept his hand against the tree. In front of him, a man, dressed in a grey suit and dark blue tie, lay on the floor, 
staring directly at him. Why are you laying on the floor? The little boy asked, but the man just lay there, silently staring. Ryan became worried then. He had seen rabbits look like that in his granddad's kitchen before his nan had prepared them for dinner. He had been taught about the death of animals, being the youngest member of a farming family, but thankfully his age meant that he had not experienced the death of a person. So he didn't know the fragility of human life matched that of an animal. The laying man blinked and a relief flushed through the child. He looked at the man, still cautious, staying in the safety of the woods before the clearing and repeated his question. Why are you laying on the floor? The man continued staring, but now his mouth moved up and down, reminding Ryan of when he had lifted his goldfish out of the water. Ryan moved from the shadows, closer to the man, but then stopped as the man's mouth opened wide in a silent protest. Shall I get my mum? Ryan asked, but the man made no attempt at a reply. There was a sound above him then, and he looked up, directly above the centre of the clearing, squinting his eyes as the strength of the sun brought tears to his eyes. His mouth hung open as suddenly a blanket of darkness fell towards the ground, blotting out the sunlight. The darkness fell quickly, and as it hit the open ground in front of him, smothering the silent man, Ryan saw it was hundreds of broken, unmoving birds, and with the sun now strong again above his head, he began to scream. That's Ryan! Denise jumped up at the scream that emanated from the woods, knocking over a full glass of pink lemonade. She ran, open-mouthed, across the soft grass and into the shadows of the trees. There was an instant chill as she passed from bright afternoon sunshine and into the thick undergrowth. Ryan! she shouted, not seeing him. Ryan! Then she saw him, standing motionless, his scream having run dry. He was staring into the clearing where Denise saw hundreds of black birds lay. Most were motionless, but there were some whose beaks still opened and closed animatedly. She hurried to him and put her hands onto his shoulders, staring, not understanding, into the clearing. Then remembering herself, she turned him and pulled him into her chest. Ryan stood his head against his mum and began to cry. The bright light dimmed as a large cloud passed before the sun and the clearing that Denise still stared into darkened considerably. Ryan pushed against his mum's chest and she loosened her grip on him. He looked up at her. Mummy, there's a man under there. Ryan didn't turn his head back but pointed behind him. Denise looked, but only dead and dying birds were visible. Are you sure? she said, and moved herself slightly forward, but Ryan pushed his head back into her embrace with such vehemence that she immediately stopped. I talked to him, Mummy. His voice was muffled against the soft fabric of Denise's shirt. His eyes were closed, and he relished the touch of his mum as she brushed through his hair with one long finger. Rebecca! Denise called loudly to her friend, but Rebecca was already there, just behind the mother and child, staring into the graveyard before them. What's happened? she said, brushing her black hair back from her forehead as she stared at the scene in front of her. I don't know. Denise turned her attention to her friend. Ryan says there's a man under there. I don't see anyone, Rebecca said turning back towards the dark mess on the floor, feet from where she stood on shaking legs. You've got to help him, Mummy. Ryan looked up into his mum's eyes pleadingly. He couldn't get up. I'll check, Ryan. Rebecca crouched by the small boy and tried to keep the quiver from her voice. She looked up to Denise, 
You take him out into the park and call the police. Denise nodded with a look of gratitude on her face. And lifting her son, she walked towards the picnic area of the park. Can you hear me? Rebecca asked. She stood at the edge of the clearing, staring at the bird corpses, not understanding. Her question had achieved no reply. She nudged one of the starlings with her foot, then pulled back with a shudder. With the sun still behind a cloud, the birds looked like a mass of black, and without the few whose wings stuck out at painful angles, she would have sworn that she was looking into a black puddle. Rebecca closed her eyes and took a few deep breaths before looking straight ahead and walking into the mass. She slid her feet forwards rather than stepped, knowing that tiny bones cracking beneath her feet would send her running back to the safety of the park. After a few shuffling movements, she dared to look down. She felt him, as well as saw, his breath cool against her uncovered ankles. Rebecca quickly knelt to him, her heartbeat rolling loudly across her chest, but she didn't speak. She couldn't speak, for as she had reached forward to the poor man's gaping mouth, he had turned black. Before her eyes, a black wave swam from beneath stretched skin until the features on the man's olive skin became indistinguishable. Rebecca! Denise's voice seemed to come from far away, and as she turned to the sound, Denise's proximity to her shocked her, and she fell backwards into the mass of dark feathers. She jumped up, disgusted, her hands tightening into fists and her teeth clenching to stop the whimper which threatened to emerge. I saw, Rebecca coughed to rid her voice of a dry crackle. His, his face. Then the last wisp of cloud moved away and the sun came out again. Ryan knelt beside the half-eaten sandwiches and spilled empty glasses on his mum's tart and picnic blanket. He held the phone in his lap and stared at the reflection of the bright sun on the blank screen. He rocked forward and backward on his haunches, white-faced, and when he heard his mum's scream, he didn't even look up, just quickened the pace of his rocking. Rebecca! Denise screamed as she saw her friend fall to the floor and into the shimmering purple and black mass of dead birds that lay scattered across the ground. Someone, please, help! No one came. No one but Ryan heard. Denise watched her friend, lying unmoving on the floor, sinking deeper into the feathers which seemed to give way beneath her, the blackness reaching around her and pulling her in. She took a step backwards and then took a running jump, wanting to clear the main bulk of the dark-coloured birds in front of her friend. She flew through the air, but before she reached Rebecca she fell as if she had hit a wall. She saw the feathers as she approached them from above, and she fell through them as if they were not really there. She cringed and tried to turn her head, tried to put her hand to her face, but found she was unable to move. In the seconds before she hit the ground, she thought about how soft the birds should have felt, but she felt nothing. Her head hit the ground first, her neck snapping in two places, and as she lay dying, she began to turn black. A squirrel, the same squirrel that Ryan had tried to feed, had watched all of this from his perch, up the tree beside the clearing. He stayed still, the sense of danger was thick in the early evening air. He scanned the ground around him but did not find a predator so he stayed where he was. From where he sat, his tail held up in a defensive posture, he looked towards the feathered creatures in the clearing and watched as they began to move. The sun set quickly after Denise's leap into the clearing, and she was still breathing as the shadows became thicker and deeper in colour. For the first time since the early morning sunset, the wind breached the edge of the clearing. The starlings began to stand and lazily flap their wings, lifting their heads from their black silhouettes on the floor. They ripped themselves from the ground, strings of black clinging to their small bodies before dropping black to the floor as the birds became strong enough to pull away. 
Other birds, the ones that had lain broken at the bottom of the pile, did not pull away from the shadows. They sunk deeper, swallowed into the ground. The man moved next, his arm tearing from the ground with a loud ripping sound, which no one was around to hear. His black head twisted in a slow, desperate motion, his mouth a gaping hole. As his movements grew, the blackness pulled away from him like latex, revealing his flawless olive skin. He stood as the last of the black ran down the trousers of his suit and pooled onto the floor. The man glanced with dark brown eyes down at the woman, Rebecca, who had started to move. The black layer which covered her from head to toe made Rebecca unrecognisable. She sat up and let the thick shadow flow down her face and chest until it pooled into her lap. The brown-eyed man smiled and offered her his hand, which she took and stood, glad to be free of the shadows as the last of it ran down her bare legs and between her toes onto the grass beneath her feet. Rebecca looked over at Denise, who lay on the floor, breathing with rasping breaths, cloudy eyes pleading up at her. Rebecca turned to the man who stood beside her, his hand linked with hers. They walked towards the edge of the clearing, stepping over the dying woman on the floor. Their shadows were barely visible now, and they seemed to struggle, trying to escape weakly grasping up blades of grass as they passed across the ground in the fading light. They walked between the trees at the edge of the clearing, the birds hopping around them or clinging to twisted branches until they emerged into the green field where Ryan still knelt. Mummy? Ryan didn't look up. He hadn't moved much since his mum had left him with her dead phone. Mummy had to go away for a while, said Rebecca, as she crouched down beside him. She wants to meet you here again tomorrow, though. You and lots of your friends, she has a surprise for you. I like surprises. His voice was monotone, robotic, but this time he glanced up at his mum's friend and then passed her. Who's that? Rebecca looked around at the man who stood just behind her and then back at Ryan. He is my very good friend, Mr. Black, she said, and the man smiled. Beyond him, the squirrel jumped from a tree, wanting to be away from the birds who were not birds and the people who were not people, and ran into a bush. What was that? Ryan's head shot round in the direction of the bush. Only a shadow, Rebecca said. You're not afraid of shadows, are you, Ryan? No, of course not. Rebecca picked the small boy up in her cold arms, and the three of them walked over toward the lights which had started to blink on in distant buildings. The boy clambered up and put his head onto one shoulder. Rebecca once again taking the man's hand in her own. Ryan looked back to the woods they were leaving behind, at the picnic blanket and the food that lay discarded across the floor, and then at their shadows, now barely visible behind them. The shadows did not hold hands, and they did not walk in a perfect copy of their owners. They fought, stretching and pawing at the ground. Ryan watched in a scared silence, as the shadows continued to attempt an escape from the invisible bind which held them to their owners, who, until only recently, had been in their place. He continued looking down at the ground, until the light disappeared, and the old Rebecca, the real Rebecca, faded away.